Good afternoon, one footballers. How are we all doing? Today we have another episode of Transfer Talk. We've been through Liverpool, we've been through United, and now it comes to Arsenal under new manager Una Emery. I'm delighted to say with me is Ty. Ty, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, man. How are you doing? How are you doing, Matt? Yeah, I'm, I'm not too bad. It's great for you to join us. I mean, I know you usually come as a package with the rest of the four bro show, but it's great to oh, get yeah. you on your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those boys, uh, those, those boys are supporting clubs that, you know, maybe not as interesting this summer. I know Liverpool have spent nope. a lot of money, but in terms of the whole changeover, we, uh, we got some massive, massive news. But we will start. We're going to go Meza Ozil. On the pitch, he's a brilliant player, but is he going to go? Uh, in my opinion, I think he's, he has to stay. He's, he's one of the players in our team that is world class. We have, I think we have a handful of players that are world class. Mm. He's one of them players that we need in our team that will stem the team, that will make everything work. He's a good playmaker. Um, and t uh, players like Aubameyang up front, he would just thrive off him. I know there's been a lot of issues off the field and I just hope that it doesn't affect our changing room yeah. because obviously with Sanchez now uh, last year, he had a lot of problems with um, the players and I hope Ozil doesn't do that because obviously Ozil does know he is one of the best players in our squad. But I personally believe that under Emery, he will thrive more. Emery obviously has managed players like Neymar, Cavani. He knows how to yeah, manage world-class players. So I personally believe that with Emery now, Elza could be a world-class player, much different player under, than under Wenger. So, yeah, I just wanted to stay. Definitely not go. Not this season. Anymore. But, I mean, even... Even though you know, he obviously is a fantastic player and everything he's done over the years, would he even fit into this Arsenal team? You mentioned Aubameyang, yeah. and then there's also Lacazette, which could potentially mean a two, uh, a two up front for Arsenal. Then would yeah. Ozil fit in on the right-hand side? And if so, is it sort of stopping his playmaking abilities from the number 10 kind of role? Where do you see him in the team? Yeah, personally, what you said was correct. I think if he plays on the wing, it will affect him massively. As you know, Urz is not the type of player to run up and down. He's the type of player <laughs> yeah, to get the yeah. ball. Yeah, exactly. So he's the type of player to get the ball in the middle of the park, making things happen. So I personally believe that playing Aubameyang and Lacazette as a two up front would be the best for Arsenal and then Urz behind. Mm. But then obviously, we do have Mkhitaryan now. So it's players that, how are we going to fit everyone in? That's the problem, but no, Ozil definitely, I think he should be playing in the middle of the park, not on the wing. It just uh, changes the way he plays and it won't, because I believe we have been linked to uh, Kingsley Coleman, of you know, and then players yeah. like that, we need them on the wing. Ozil, I can't see him running at players, creating stuff. He's more of a guy that needs to cut in and it's too predictable for wing backs, in my opinion. But yeah, no, it, it is predictable, I'll give you that. And I mean, his style of play is often kind of best when it is unpredictable. Yeah. But how, this is what I don't understand, how are you going to fit so many players in? <laughs> how, let's, let's just say, right, let's just, go, let's just go a solid back four for Arsenal, mm. okay, and obviously with the keeper. If you've then got up front, Lacazette and Aubameyang up front, you've then got, let's say, you know, someone like Coman comes in. Mkhitaryan, Coman and Ozil behind him, right, that leaves room for one player in centre midfield to hold it all down. Like, surely no one's that good, not even can take a cover that kind of ground. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. We have brought in Terrell, obviously. We have, uh, the thing is, it's, it's the, the formation we're going to play. That's, mm. that's the thing that I think he needs to work out first. Once he's got the formation down, uh, Ozil, all these players, I just believe at the top of the bill right now should be Ozil because he is the world-class player. He's the number one go-to man. Yeah. But Mkhitaryan, he has, the thing is, he didn't have the best of seasons when he did come to us. He didn't play the best. But I just don't know how he's going to fit in like all these players. I just think some players are going to have to prove themselves or they're going to have to be on the bench. You can't fit them all in, so... Gonna have to yeah, be. No, I mean, it's a kind of good headache to have if you're a yeah, manager is, to have yeah. so many quality players in your bench. Like, squad mm -hmm. depth is something that, you know, is, it's often a criticism leveled at some other teams. Looking at Spurs and Liverpool have done well this summer. But beyond yeah. the first team, to not have many good backups, especially, I remember looking last season, towards the end of last season, and some of the Arsenal bench, I'd be like, who even are these guys? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, it's, it's all like, I'm all for giving the academy, you know, the academy yeah. guys some minutes and some experience on the bench. But when you've literally got a bench of like a recognised goalkeeper, a recognised defender, and then a few young attackers, it's obviously mm. it's obviously an area that Emery's looked to improve for sure. Yeah, for sure. Like uh, to be fair, our youngsters aren't really that bad. Uh, if you yeah. in KTR, he has been performing. He has been scoring a lot of goals in preseason. I like the look of that Nelson as well. And Reece yeah, Reese Nelson. Nelson, he's one another one. But uh, in the way of like. The players we brought in, a lot of them are old, so maybe he is looking to build the youngsters through them. Mm. Maybe they'll give them experience, maybe. And maybe the future of Arsenal is these youngsters, you never know. 
Yeah. But at the end of the day, I do feel like even Welbeck, for example, he's not a young star. I believe we might get on to him, but Welbeck, I think he should go. He should go, and he's not good enough in my yeah. opinion. And to bring so, the youngsters through, so it'll be better, so, much better. Yeah, no, no, I agree. I, I think, I think even for English football, it's pretty yeah, good exactly, to have youngsters yeah. coming through. Mm. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll take a an end line on Özil, in or out. Uh, in for this. In. Season. You're gonna say yeah. he's staying. So yeah. leading on from that. Let's, let's go to a quick segment because I feel like Arsenal are really, really, you know, kind of top of this category when it comes to dead wood players. Now, yeah. I'm not like offending the players directly, but I think when it comes to progressing forward as a squad, surely Ooh. some of them have got to go. Look, Un Unai Emery apparently came in and said there are five untouchables. Yeah. Right, the guys who's going to build the squad around. So it was, I think, Xhaka, Bellerin, Aubameyang, Lacazette, and the last one was Mkhitaryan, apparently so. Mm. Right, this could obviously change over the summer. So what does that mean for the likes of Ramsey, as you said, Welbeck? Um, you know, even a few others who really sort of have come in and haven't really produced over the years. Do they, do Arsenal have this thing of holding on for a player for just a bit too long? You know, as shown with Walcott. Yeah, I think, I think we have a big problem with that. The fact that maybe it's the fact we're in the Europa League, we can't uh, attract these big name players. So I yeah. personally believe that keeping hold of these players, I think he's thinking on a big term of squad. Maybe, for example, if we get far in the Europa League and mm. we have to balance Premier League, it's good to have a big range of players. But at the same time, the amount of players we have, some of their egos are so big, they, they don't want to be playing on the bench. They want to be starting. Yeah. And it's the fact to keep all these players happy is going to be such a headache for him. I personally believe that such a Ramsey, I personally believe he, he, he has proved himself that he can play at a big level, play a big part in Arsenal. But Welbeck, mm. on the other hand, I personally think that his, his time is up. He's, he's not good enough to play at a big club, in my opinion. I think he, yeah. should, he deserves to be more Burnley type of player, uh, type of clubs. No offence to anyone supports them, but yeah. that teams where he can be the Watch first team Watch out for the player. Burnley haters yeah, now. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, teams that can, um, he can play first team, regular football, because like, he does have potential. Yeah. He has experience in that international level. But um, yeah, Emery is just, he's a man that he he's, has a lot of experience on the players. He knows how to manage them well. So it's up to mm. him to be fair, but uh, especially the names that you mentioned, the five yeah. names. I think they're definitely like players that we need to keep a hold of for us to progress forward. So, I mean, why is it then that the rumours of people coming in are so massive, especially around the likes of players like Steven and Zonzi? Okay, he's someone who is a fantastic defensive midfielder, but if you've got the likes of Xhaka, who apparently is an untouchable, you're saying Ramsey's earned his place in the squad, you're saying that Torreira's just been bought in, why would they be looking to bring in someone like Nzonzi as well? Would he start and then, then kick someone else out? Mm, that's the thing. I, I pers we've been missing a player like Nzonzi since Patrick mm. Vieira days, Gilberto Silva. He's so tall, he's French, he's strong, he's got experience in the Premier League, he's played there before. Yeah. But the thing is with Xhaka, he hasn't performed, so... But maybe Emery's seeing something different, he knows how to uh, work around him. Maybe he might be trying to put them both in, but then what happens to Torreira, that's the question. Yeah. I'm not sure how he's working, but if Nzonzi does come in, then yeah, he's going to have to let uh, go of some midfielders but if he's keeping hold of Xhaka I just believe that it has to be either one of them I don't see them playing together with yeah. all the other players but in my opinion I would prefer Nzonzi as in from what I saw before from what I see of him how strong he is how big he is yeah. that is what we're missing and with Xhaka now he sometimes he can be a letdown he can do them big mistakes that lead to goals mm. so personally um yeah, if, if we get Nzonzi in, then it will be a big a big um, blow for us. So, so you're not. going in for Nzonzi? Yeah, definitely in. in. 100%. We've been, yeah, we've been missing so, him since Patrick Vieira. All them things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can see the kind of Arsenal crying out for that big physical presence in the middle. Mm -hmm. You know, definitely. Jack Wilshere was certainly aggressive, but not, not wasn't necessarily yeah, not the biggest. presence. And yet, yeah, moving kind of forward from the midfield, so if Nzonzi is holding it down, the likes of Torreira, you know, from what I've seen of him, certainly with Uruguay, a pretty decent player. Um, what about this link? And apparently it's a battle between, and you're not going to like it, between Arsenal and Spurs for, for Barcelona's Andre Gomez. Oh, yeah. Again, he kind of seems like another player who, when he come in, he's either going to, coming from Barcelona, and, you know, I'm not being offensive to Arsenal, but it's a step down, you know, at least step down from Champions League to Europa League yeah. for the next season at least. He's going to want to start. There's no way Andre Gomez is going to want to go from the bench at Barca to the bench at Arsenal. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's, 
It's the thing is with Andre Gomez, like he's a young player, he's 24 mm. years old, which is better, like it's better than all the other older players we're bringing in. But at the same time, can I realistically see him starting over these players? He has, has he pro- he hasn't proved himself yeah. at Barcelona. Obviously, it's much harder at Barcelona. But maybe Emery just wants a big squad. I just think everything that's been linked to Arsenal is rolls around this squad rotation and stuff. But with Gomez, even Spurs, would he really start for Spurs? I don't know. With their midfield the as well. Thing. Exactly. I just, so, I'm unsure, and he'd have to. I feel like he'd have to move to a team where you'd be like, right, you are dead certain we're going to build yeah, the midfield yeah. around you. To step into a rotation of a squad doesn't mm. really seem like the best thing for him. Someone like Torreira can understand. Where you're moving yeah. from South America, and you're moving, you know, it's, it's a step up. Basically, mm. coming from the other direction, I completely get. But stepping down into a rotation doesn't quite fit for me. I mean, look, I think he's a good player. There's no way. You can sign for Barcelona in the first place without being a decent footballer. Yeah, I just true. think whether or not he would fit into Arsenal, what he'd actually be, you know, I mean, yeah, would you a- see him alongside Nzonzi? Would he be one of the attacking three or what do you think? I, I personally think uh, I'll see him more of a defensive minded. I don't see him going above a, a certain point of the pitch because if you've got players like Ozil, all these creative players, yeah. he wouldn't uh, be able to be on the same level as them. But at the same time, as you said, like going to a club that you're a bench player to another bench player in another club, and especially at Barcelona, that's the best club to be at. You have your Champions League, you'll be fighting yeah. for the titles. With Arsenal, when you roll the league, Maybe he does believe he has what it takes to go into the first team, which fair enough. If he proves himself, then we'll have yeah. no problem with that. But yeah, it's a bit of a weird one, really. And personally, I think he will be a good squad rotation player. And apparently they're thinking of loaning it for the first year and then a permanent after. So maybe he just wants to see right. how he works in the Premier League at the start and then we could go for a permanent. But yeah, to be fair, the more players we have, the more better we have a squad. So I'll say in, definitely in. Yeah. Especially in so Spurs. Spurs doesn't yeah. get him and we get him. Is that, even <laughs> if he's terrible. Even yeah, if he's terrible, yeah, you just yeah, want yeah, to ahead of Spurs. Yeah. That's fair English. enough. So you've gone in for Unzonzi and mm. for Andre Gomez as well yeah. and for Ozil to say. So it's a pretty packed squad. Yeah, it's a squad. So, let, let I mean, we, it, it looks like we've got a full house in terms mm. of the players that we've in depth talked about. But I will talk as well, just lastly, before we, uh, before we round this up. Mm-hmm. Were you, and yeah, it's difficult to look back on it, were you Wenger <laughs> in or Wenger out? <laughs> Uh, well, the, if the I know the other people of football show are watching right now and the bros, but they will know I was going out every video we made. I was, I was yeah. at the start. I was saying going out, going out. It's just he's been he's been in charge for too long. He was in charge for too long, and it was just the players were getting comfortable. Players were not performing, and yeah. they were still starting. As you know, even Xhaka, he was just performing terrible, and he was starting every game, every game. So yeah, mm. definitely going out. I was, I was, I was going in. Like uh, ages ago, when we used to uh, uh, challenge for the Champions League, the mm. titles. But as soon as we dropped to the Europa League, that I think that should have just been it. But yeah, he's gone but now, he, so on to bigger things. Yeah, I was gonna say he's gone now, and now with Unai Emery, you're pretty pleased with that, I assume. Yeah, because at the start, I know we were linked to Mikel Arteta, and I was just thinking, yeah. if we got if we got him, I w- I know a lot of fans would have been happy with that. But with uh, Emery, he's got experience. He's won Europa League as well countless times, so. That he's a winner, yeah. Yeah, he's a winner. And uh, with Arsenal's team, we do have a potential there with the players we have. We just need a few more additional players, a, f- a few more uh, updated tactics. But Wenger was just out of date with mm. most of his tactics. And I think, yeah, we could challenge um, for bigger things. Next year, though, the main target is Champions League football. That's all yeah, I'm looking forward back to. Back into the top four. Yeah, back into the top four. So I can have something to say in, in videos because nowadays I-, I have nothing to say about Arsenal. <laughs> Can't it's going to be difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The it's league is really improving hard. in the top six, especially. Mm. Yeah, the top fight, six. The fight is Even on. Liverpool. Liverpool has mm. done a lot of big signings, spent a lot of money. Mm. And um, yeah, but, uh, I personally think the best way we're going to get through is the Europa League. That's the only realistic way I see. I don't Not know if we'll yet. finish top four this year. I, I personally don't. But yeah, if we win Europa League, then. That'll be perfect. Hopefully. And happy days. Yeah. Amazing. Well, for once, it's nice to speak to a very optimistic Arsenal fan. Yeah, yeah. And not it's, someone it's over who's negative now. over it's, the last few days. Yeah, it's a new start, so you've got to be positive. Yeah. And we'll give him a couple years. I don't want Arsenal fans watching this now to, to judge on him from the first year. We've yeah. got a good time. And hopefully, 
big, we, we go on to bigger things. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to Ty for coming on. Uh, let us know what you think down below in the comments section. Hit us up with all of your transfer rumors, what you reckon of today's, and don't forget to smash that like button. But until next time, we'll see you again soon.